In this video, we're going to see how to use integrated circuits, or ICs, to build circuits on a breadboard. So if we look closely at our IC, we see that it has a number. And so this number can be used to identify the purpose of our IC. So if we research this number online, we can find a data sheet telling us that this particular IC contains four OR gates. Another thing to notice about the IC is that one side will always have a notch or a little circle. And so this is to help us orient the IC. From that same data sheet we found online, there's something called a pinout diagram. And so our pinout diagram we notice also has a notch. And so relating these two, we can then tell which pins are which on our IC. And so of course that's important if we want to wire things correctly. So for instance, we said this IC contains four OR gates. Elsewhere in the data sheet, it specifies that A, B are inputs and Y is an output. So for instance, one A, one B, are two inputs to an OR gate, and one Y is an output to an OR gate. So we can relate that to our pins 1, 2, and 3, as we see in the IC picture on the left. So when we're placing our ICs in the breadboard, we want to make sure that the pins are at roughly a 90 degree angle to this black plastic casing. And so when we're placing them on the breadboard, we actually want our IC to straddle sort of this middle gap here. And so that's so that none of the pins are connecting. So we just line it up and firmly place it into the breadboard. And so as we can see here, um, it's very close to the breadboard. It's not standing out up above it. And so that's how we want to place our IC. So when we're done with our IC, it's useful to have something like a pencil or something else that's small that we can use to pry the IC out. Uh, sometimes it can be difficult to remove if you're just using your hand. So let's say you're using an IC that's never been used before. So in this case, it's not uncommon to see that the legs are not exactly at right angles with that black plastic body. So if we go to put it in our breadboard, we notice it doesn't quite fit around that trench. So we see it's not really sitting very smoothly here. And so what we need to do is bend those legs a little bit. So the best way to do that is grab the IC by both ends and use a table or some other flat surface and just gently roll the IC to straighten the legs out. And so of course we're gonna to have to do that to each side. And so just kind of reassess after you do it each time. And so what we'll notice is I actually needed several times to get it in this video. And so it's better to sort of do a little bit and have to roll it more later as opposed to bend it too much and then have to bend it back the other way. Um, because these pins can be a little fragile and if they bend too much, they'll eventually just break off. So here I'm just rolling it a little more on each side, again with the goal of having these pins roughly at a right angle with that black casing. So we see that looks a little better. And sure enough, it's gonna pop right into our breadboard now. And we see it's nice and close to the breadboard. And so again, we can pop that out with our pencil and place it back with our other ICs. And so one thing to note as well is if you look at all of these ICs over here on the right, we notice that we have different sizes and different number of pins depending on what IC we're using.